you've got 12 forward gears and eight reverses. And he says in eighth high reverse, he can do 40 mile an hour backwards. Three mornings a week, 85-year-old Ralph Affleck heads from his farmhouse at Legume on the New South Wales-Queensland border across the paddock to where he feels most at home, his sawmill. Remarkably, Ralph designed and built it himself, a little retirement project which took four years to build. Ralph didn't finish school his only qualifications were 50 years of timber cutting and sawmilling. But uh, I've got a, a, a pretty, pretty good idea of how to build things. And uh, uh, I've, uh, I thought, well, golly, I finished at, at about, about maybe about 66, 67. I finished my logging work. I was logging for another mill. I thought, no, I'll build another sawmill. I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll go ahead and build it. It's unbelievable that someone could sit down with a school ruler, mind you, a 30 centimetre wooden school ruler, and drew everything to scale in 3D so that he knew everything would pass and rotate without getting caught on another cog or another piece of the machinery before he started building it. Incredible. Ralph Affleck's from a timber family. His father was a timber man. He grew up in a timber town. I was only 16 years old when I started in the timber industry. I was uh, driving a steam log winder winding rolling logs before four crawler tractors became popular uh, winding them out of the scrubs and then uh, my father who was a sawmiller decided that we'd build he'd build another sawmill I suppose I would be about no maybe 19 when the mill was built and I'm 84 now so I've been at it quite a long time how many fingers have you got and how many toes I got nine toes and I got ten fingers I chopped one off with a pinch bar one time. Went straight through the top of my boot, my brand new boots. I thought, my God, what a stupid thing to do now. I've ruined a pair of new boots. Anyway, I went on working, got the log on the truck, and the foot started to get a bit sore. So I thought, oh, gee, I don't know, I must have bruised that toe. So I put, took my boots off, took my sock off, and my toe fell out. <laughs> Hearing about Ralph's many near misses, leaves you wondering how he survived for so long and why he didn't quit at 60. But he had a long-held dream of building his own mill, something he could run solo without the hassle of employees, allowing him to work when he felt like it. There are one-man portable mills about, but they can't cut the timber the way he wants. There are entirely different uh, method of doing it this this way it's a conventional just like a conventional old time seam steam sawmill that I've updated fortunately I knew the sawmilling side and I knew what a piece of timber will do naturally for itself when you cut it it'll do all sorts of funny things and if you know what that's going to do you can design the machinery to to accommodate that once he finalised the design, he went scavenging, haunting second-hand yards for years. I've got a, a break, a, a, a big worm drive thing here out of, out of the break of a bullock wagon, way back before the 1900s. There's lots of pieces in here out of an old steam engine. There's a, 19, a 1912 Republic truck, a diff out of it, with a gearbox out of a Max and all that type of thing. And, uh, uh, and another gearbox out of an old Chrysler. They, they all lend themselves to, to, to what you're, 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 you're going to make. I believe there's even some parts that you got from a plane. Yes, there's four, six control, uh, hydraulic cylinders here. 
out of uh, Canberra bombers. Uh, there's two of them operate that, that uh, big log lifter up there. And there was a firm in Brisbane sold army and, uh, and uh, air force disposal stuff. Bits and pieces out of everything, even tank engine, air, army tank engines, aircraft engines, you name it, they sold them. There are things in it that I didn't do right. Because, let's face it, and the fellow who's never made a mistake, he's never made anything. His best find, a Leyland engine, just like the one from an old wartime tank which powered his dad's mill for years. They'd be sitting in a crane, a disused crane in, in Wanless's wrecking yard in Brisbane. Oh, I've been there for years and years and years. And, and I brought it home, so I'd, she fired first one up and I've never put a screwdriver on it. And I've been running down there in the mill for 13 years. With all these levers, Ralph can run the mill on his own. Tony Pearson is in awe of Ralph. My jaw dropped on the ground <laughs> to start with. I'm very impressed. Um, and I knew from the first moment that this guy was special. In my lifetime, I've met quite a number of, or sought out quite a number of um, old folk with talents like this, but Ralph just tops the lot. We all worry about him. Not so much being in the mill, uh, but when he goes up the back onto the Queensland border and, uh, and cuts trees, and then hooking them up to the skidder and bringing them down, that is a very dangerous game. Would you hope that at 84 he'd given it away? No, no, because I know he knows what he's doing and I'm not, I'm not worried now. I've, I've passed the worry. <laughs> um, no, no, he has to do that. Yes. Why does he have to do it? Well, it's, it's his passion and I can't see him pulling the pin. He hasn't pulled the pin yet. <laughs> He's having trouble doing that. Initially, Ralph's wife, Heather, wasn't a fan of the mill, but is now proud of what he's built. For several years, the mill earned its keep too. The couple supplied building timber until licence fees made it uneconomic. No matter, Three days a week, Ralph happily potters amidst the sawdust and noise. Behind the wheel of his log skidder, he could be Mad Max's grandpa. I could never see myself bolting two tractors together with a homemade mechanism in the middle and having it work so efficiently and for so many years. And as Tony lost me at Knocker Motor, I'll let him explain the ingenuity of Ralph's design. Knowing that he has had problems with the first type of engine he had in it, getting the common knocker motor and putting in it, that allowed him more room for gearboxes, so he puts another two gearboxes in it. And to have three gearboxes in it and have so many forwards and reverses, it's incredible. How many forwards and how many reverses? You've got 12 forward gears and eight reverses. And he says, um, in, in eighth high reverse, he can do 40 mile an hour backwards. Well, I wouldn't like to try it, but oh man, what a machine. As well as a skidder, there's a log loader which is in its fifth decade of service. There is a Leyland truck parts in it from a Leyland 1924 truck. There's a lot of parts in it from an army duck, tractor parts, GMC axle and, and steering. It's such a mix match machine, but it does such a mighty job. Ralph and Heather have a system. Three nights a week, he trades their retirement home in Warwick for their farmhouse at Legume, 40 minutes away. He rings, gives three rings on the phone, and in there I know that, uh, and then I ring him. And then every night and morning we do that. And so I know he's 
okay. <laughs> if he had retired and come to Warwick, you know, full time, he wouldn't be here now. We, the family, we know that. <laughs> so no, it's happy. He's happy doing it, and I, if anything happened there, well, I know he's happy doing it. Despite saying he'd quit the mill when he turned 80, Ralph can't quite manage to pull the pin. I'm not to the stage of playing lawn bowls or something like that. Uh, I've, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still making things, like I've just made a new clutch for this thing up here. I enjoy the, the challenge of making something uh, that's going to work and having the, uh, the pleasure of using it and saying, yeah, well, Ralph, you could have done better, but you didn't make a bad job of that. It might be a one-man mill, but Tony Pearson has become a regular visitor. Hello, I. I can't get enough of him. I really can't. Um, some weeks I'll be out there every day, you know, for an hour or two with him. And um, at the end of the day, he says, oh, so glad you come out. Well, I wouldn't have been able to do that without you. And then other days I go out and he says, oh, what are you doing here? as though I'm snooping on him. <laughs> like, I don't need a babysitter. <laughs> and Tony hasn't got Ralph to himself anymore. For words got out, both Ralph and the mill are worth a visit. He's now regularly hosting tour groups. So do you like it when a tour group comes? Yes, I do, Pip. I enjoy talking to them. And I enjoy coming and seeing uh, just uh, the way I'm doing it now. when they get a, a glimpse of Ralph's life and his abilities and what he's made in, in the mill, you can see them walking back to the bus at the end of the tour, wanting to throw their walking sticks away and saying to themselves, I'm going home to do something with my life. I'm not finished yet.